folks um, here we go again this video is about how to arrange your chord change for one instrument at a time so that you uh, are getting various arrangement and accompaniment patterns going on underneath and as you are listening to other styles of music you should be um, absorbing and noticing what kind of patterns composers, composers use so this chord change in front of you now um, you should recognize from the uh, previous videos and what we're going to do today is we're going to slowly uh, move that to we're going to use um, violins we're going to pretend we're writing in a classical style although this works for any genre so first off what I've done and I'm using logic so this is uh, my option click my ALT click I've copied that chord change there across to here now once I've done that I am going to now make guarantee uh, that I'm using the, the correct harmonies for each of those bars each part of the cycle uh, by using the option click again and I'm going to put it on every single instrument like so now this is uh, just a little bit labor intensive now you, um, but what we're going to do is we're now going to mute the piano so we don't get confused and I am going to use command 4 in logic to open my piano roll and this is um, for the first violins I've created you know typical orchestra lineup violins 1, violins 2, violas, cellos this could be flute 1, flute 2, clarinet 1, clarinet 2 it could be a bank of four saxophones it could be um, the co any combination of instruments you like I suggest because you're trying to pass GCSE that you arrange it in a the kind of semi orchestral or traditional band format. So it could be trumpet one, trumpet two, horns, trombones. Uh, arrange it so you've got like a soprano voice, an alto voice, a tenor voice, and a bass voice. Right, back to the notes. For the violin one part, I am going to remove everything from underneath so they are left with the top notes only and there we go and I've just guaranteed that the first violin is going to be you know ensure uh, playing our chord sequence we're going to get the correct vertical harmonies everything's going to be okay next one this is a violin two so they want to be playing the second note down this is not rocket science so you remove the top note first there we go and then you remove the bottom two parts this would be the tenor and bass parts if you're used to thinking like a choir gone and then we repeat that process for the other two instruments as well I'll just demonstrate here so this is for the violas so the top two voices are violin one and violin two don't need those anymore and there we go and then bass voices gone as well and then easily for the cellos we just get rid of everything on top because we've done soprano alto tenor or you know uh, the one two and three parts at the top this should now sound pretty decent i am trying to practice what i preach i haven't practiced this it's an experiment let's see how it works <laughs> Now 
that's great and it would work for a sort of moody introduction particularly if I slowed the tempo down a little bit um, but uh, it doesn't demonstrate a huge amount of knowledge um, uh, so we need to make it a little bit more complicated by adding some rhythm so I'm going to use my option click again uh, ALT if you're using an older style keyboard and I'm going to bring in the cross now one little cheeky thing that you can do in Logic is that now um, you've got um, separate voices for each of the instruments we can actually piano roll all of those at one time so I just lasso all of those there I'm going to do command 4 and now I can see everything we know that everything on there is violin 1 that's violin 2 that's viola and that's my cello very moody thank you very much now we could do something really really simple whoops I don't know where that top notes come from right uh, I can do select all instead then now taking everything there and I'm just going to do a really simple rhythm so everything's moving more or less on the beat now because the notes are different in length I'm going to go for some stuff the duration is going to be slightly longer than a quaver and I know from experience that that will give me time to hear the notes will be triggered in logic okay right so this isn't going to sound brilliant it's all right but it's, um, it's not giving us enough information to sort of be a bed for the melody all the way through it could be like a, a way of winding energy up it could be a way of um, doing like a breakdown after your sort of big bridge in the middle of the piece but it's not really demonstrating enough skill so again I'm going to be a cut and paste merchant using my option click and I'm just going to do crotchet rhythms it depends on what door you're using to you know what commands these work um, now we've got a funny one here because we've got a syncopation look this one here is happening on the and of beat 2 so these are all happening on the beat quite like that I'll put, I'm going to sort of miss one beat out and go back to there on the beat didn't mean to sound like Jaws then and then I'm being consistent with my pattern again so again we've got that piece for the DNA uh, the, like the rhythmic DNA of the piece it's just not random stuff happening all over uh, all the time and then what did I do here I just put it on beat 4 look this is the second bar of the phrase there we are look second bar of the phrase and then the chorus was triggered on the last beat of the bar so I'm trying to make pretty patterns in sound that's all the music is we've got a basic accompaniment all right so just to review what we've done so far we started with our piano chord change there it's a nice four bar cycle we then arranged each of those bits That's, there's the piano part we made that the violin one part and every note that's the top part there became the top part for the violin one uh, let's have a look at that there and then once we cut and, cut and paste all of these down to the separate voices violins two became my alto voice the second voice down violas became the tenor voice the third voice down and the cellos did the bass voice for me as well after that 
we experimented with a bit of a basic rhythm and that is stage one of getting a decent accompaniment going. Interest in the accompaniment, where you take your chord change and you're splitting up, splitting up the single line instruments, is to arpeggiate it. So, arpeggio means to play a note in the chord. So you play the root note, the third, the fifth, and then the octave. And then, if you want, you can continue going up and up and up during that. This works for any genre. Uh, so, sometimes it's called a broken chord pattern. Um, you might hear the you know certain set patterns you know called like Alberti basses and things. There are all sorts of ways of doing this, uh, of creating these patterns. It's going to be a little bit different this time. So, as you may have just noticed, I've taken my chord change. Uh, it's great because I've got it on mute, and then I've just done it the once this time for the violin. I'm doing Command Four. Now. I'm going to take the. I'm going to get rid of all the bass notes, so they don't uh, confuse us because that might be too big a leap. Remember, we're trying to avoid leaps of more than an octave until you really, really know what you're doing. Oops, keep, keeps doing that. Doing that. Right. So I lasso these, and we're going to turn these into an arpeggio. And I am deciding that I am going to do because I've got quite a high tempo. I'm going to do quavers. So those are going to be um, each one of these blocks is a semi quaver. Two semi quavers equals a quaver. And I'm going to descend. Okay, so I've got my inversion there, and I'm going to do a descending. For some reason, descending sounds a little bit more grown up for GCSE compositions than ascending, in my opinion. You probably want to disagree. So all I've done there is make sure those goes one note out after each other. Okay. Now I've got a bit of a gap now before the chord changes. So I'm just going to repeat that pattern until the gap is taken up. And that's fine. So I'm going to repeat that for all of the chord changes. It's a bit laborious to start with. So um, we're going, our pattern is top, middle, bottom, top, middle, bottom. So I'm going to go top, middle, bottom and then see if I've got room to cut and paste it in there we go you can see oops just missed oh that last one there is just bumping into the next chord change so we've got this overlap can you see that so I'm just going to get rid of it. It's also skipped down for some reason. So let me go back and see. So I need you to see me solving mistakes. So this note here, when I cut and paste it, bumps into this note here. And that's no good. So I've only got room for two. So let's try that. Oops, it just doesn't want to go. And now it's done its logic's favourite trick of not actually cutting and pasting. There we go. And then we will then continue this process all the way through. And I'll show you what it sounds like at the end. Just to help you uh, know what we're looking at, that was the first chord. It's been uh, we're putting a broken chord pattern into a descending chord pattern, and then here's the next chord shape. And we had to do a little bit of a dodge so that it didn't bump into the next chord. 
same here again and oops no not quite there's the next chord look same three notes repeated same three notes repeated I had to do a bit of a dodge not to get bumped into the next chord which was there now when I'm listening to that it's great but it's a little bit lumpy I'm gonna try it where it sounds like shorter Too short now. Come on, computer. It's okay. Let's see what happens if we take the accompaniment from earlier along for the other three instruments. Now these guys are just playing on the beat. And we go across there. That's fine, but I can hear that the the, the these two are clashing sometimes. You can see they're overlapping. So here, for example, they're overlapping. There they are, look, overlapping, overlapping. And that sort of spoils my pattern a little bit. So let's just take these guys, this one away. That's great. I think we could do something that means the second violins haven't got anything interesting to do so let's see if we can be imaginative here let's see if we can put a B line in I have not prepared this so I have no idea what will happen so I'm going back to my original chord change now these guys aren't playing the bass line we'll get rid of it they're not playing the tenor line, the third note down, get rid of all of those. Same note. And they're not playing the top line. Now, that's fine. What I'm going to do is select all of those. And because they are bumping into the arpeggiated first violin, I'm going to put them up an octave. What's that sound like then? Very loud, so I'm not going to use my mixer, I'm going to use the velocity. That's good, but now I'm going to just do one little composery type thing and I am going to put some big jumps in I'm just going to nick any note in the C scale why not use a C and I really like that I am guessing now so C worked last time let's see if it works again somewhere um, let's get into the second half of the phrase I went underneath those times let's see if I go above now I, well, I don't want to be doing anything much bigger than an octave obviously professionals do but they know what they're doing <laughs> Just whacked in a note from the scale because we are working in C major. Right, try it.
Right, just quickly then to finish, um, just to prove you that this works in different genres, I've uh, instead of doing violins this time, I have done exactly the same procedure. I started with my um, chord change, I cut and paste it down, and I thought, right, do it in a guitar bass fashion. So the bass line became straight eighths. <laughs> make that funkier. For the guitar part over the top what I had to do was I removed the bass part, I removed the tenor part as well because it gets a little bit dense very very quickly and then I did the trick that we did with the second violins a minute ago um, just put in some nice big expressive leaps. <laughs> as well just to make it a bit funkier um, then just to, I mean I'm not an expert in electronic music by any stretch of the imagination but I did the same thing again I copied across my piano uh, uh, original chord sequence and then I got a sort of vaguely decent bass voice this is just the bass notes here do the arpeggios I cheated in the uh, second part this is exactly the same thing so let me demonstrate move that up there move the mute the bass so here is the piano now I really like logic's retro synth so what I did is I went to the channel input for this channel and I chose retro synth and this is just the bog standard preset, uh, preset which comes out and then I twiddled with some of the controls and came up with this sound actually that's not true what I did is I went up to the MIDI effects slot up here to my mouses and I added an arpeggiator logic does it for you interesting and you can automate all of that kind of stuff as well but that's the uh, subject of another story okay so just to recap we started with this okay and then by breaking that up and giving it to one instrument at a time but making sure that everybody is sticking to the same chord change you can take those chord sequences and have a variety of different genres okay um, and it's uh, fairly straightforward to do if you've got the time and patience and you stick to your chord change you will be fine okay see you next time